Harry Potter, Harry Potter, hey. Dumbledore. Oh, sh. If you go to do this. Then keep watching. Ooh, they almost saw that. Hey guys, my name is Zach Ferguson, and this channel is all about helping you guys reach your tricking goals. I may not be the best tricker, but hopefully my experience can help you guys become the best. This is a tutorial for a 540 kick. And this tutorial was requested by Rising, Rising Dragon. Dragon. A 540 kick is one of those easy tricks where when you post on a forum or ask people like, hey, what are my basics? What do I need to get? They'll say, yeah, just get your 540, uh, get your backflip, get a bunch of those uh, like super easy movements, um, and then you'll, you'll be able to progress from there and get harder tricks. And while yes, it's simple, it's not necessarily easy, especially to learn as a beginner. And I'm gonna give you a drill and a couple different methods, so hopefully I can paint a big picture for you and help you understand which method or which combinations of methods will work for you. That way you know the ins and outs of 540 kick. In terms of prerequisites for this move, there really is only one. You only need a tornado kick to get a good 540 kick. However, having a really strong round kick or inside crescent kick is definitely gonna help you. And one of the methods is going to be transforming one move into another. So if you also have a good cheat 720 kick, that can also help you to learn your 540 kick. I just got my vaccine today and I'm a little bit out of it. Uh, the 5G hasn't been installed on my phone yet like I thought it would be, um, but I just want to get this video done so that way I can go lay down. So let's go ahead and get to the quick tutorial. It's evolving. Yeah. Okay, so what is a 540 kick? A 540 kick is simply a tornado hyper, or a tornado where you kick and you land on the kicking leg, turning back to your target as or before you hit the ground. You could also think of it as a cheat setup to hyper round kick. So you do your cheat, you kick a target, and then you land on that leg that you kick. There are a ton of different martial arts that contain this kick, like Taekwondo, Karate, Capoeira, 
uh, except in capoeira it's called a parafuso whereas when we do a parafuso it's a kind of 540 double leg it's just kind of funny in my opinion because it's interesting how things get lost in translation and some communities call something something and others call something something else if you know what i mean basically every community has a different name for the same movements I think that vaccine is kicking in. So with this video, before we actually jump into the methods, uh, what I want you to do first is actually go through a drill on the ground. So this is a drill I teach my students because it teaches them to lead with their hips. So what you want to do is you want to lay down, start propped up on your elbows and find your target. Then what you're going to do is lift your left knee if you twist to your left at your target or kind of just up in the air, really trying to push your hip to the sky. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other leg. And then you're going to turn your body sideways. And as you're turning sideways, you're going to try and push forward with your right knee towards your target and sideways. But you want to focus on pushing your hip forward. So you want your knee to be pointing, but you want it to be basically a straight line from your knee to your shoulder. You don't want to create this concave shape that you see a lot of times in 540s or tornadoes because uh, if you can keep that leg line, then that is actually going to help pull you through your 540 later on. So practice it on the ground. Do it over and over again. You can go slow, just chamber at the target, turn your body, point that hip, point that knee, and then kick through and then roll over to face your target again. One thing I do wanna mention is that you wanna do this like a round kick, not like a crescent kick. In almost all 540s, it will look like some combination of a front kick, a crescent kick, or a round kick. And it kind of ends up being a combination of all three of those just because of the way the movement works. But you definitely want to focus on trying to do a round kick because if you are doing a crescent kick, you're gonna be pulling with your adductors and basically it's your groin pulling you through the motion. And if you are doing a round kick, you're actually using more of your core and your quads to kick rather than your smaller muscles that are your adductors. So your quads are a lot stronger and will give you a lot more power. And if you're kicking like a crescent, then you have a lot farther to travel than if you're kicking like a round because if you kick like a round kick you're turning all the way sideways then you're kicking and you're kicking at your target and then immediately down whereas if you kick like a crescent your chest is facing your target and then you kick kind of out here across down without your chest even really moving and then you turn so it slows you down a ton so practice this with a round kick but essentially just do it faster and faster lift the left knee lift the right knee, make sure your hip is pushing forward, kick across, let that kick spin you. So as you're kicking, try to turn a little bit and then find that target again and practice lifting that left knee again. This is your form for a 540. Kind of teaches you to lean back while also keeping your core strong, while also leading with your knees, while also doing a round kick, while also spinning back to your target. It's also nice because you don't need any equipment to do it. So with all of that covered, let's go ahead and jump into method number one. For method number one, it's simply the tornado evolution. So there are tons of different types of tornadoes, but the most common ones I see are going to be a tornado kick with a crescent kick or a round kick or a front kick. But there's also a twist kick and a bunch of different ones like I was saying. For this tutorial, what I want you to focus on is a tornado with a round kick. I don't have a tutorial for a tornado yet, but when it is made, you can find it right there in the card. Otherwise, I'm just pointing at the corner and nothing's happening right now. But for this method, make sure that you are doing a tornado kick with a proper round kick. So the goal of this method is to essentially always land on your left or two legs while trying to spin more and more back to your target. So you want to pick a target and you want to do your tornado kick, you want to round kick as much as possible so that you are turned away from your target with your chest, and then you spin around and find your target as fast as possible. Make sure when you kick, as soon as you hit your perceived target, you wrap those arms in so you can turn around faster. But essentially what you're gonna do is slowly make it to where you're landing on two feet over time. So you're going to do your tornado, kick, try to land on two feet. You can go higher than I am, but my current hip flexibility will not allow me to jump super high and also do a proper round kick. I can jump really high and do like a front kick for a tornado, but if you can jump higher than me and do a proper round kick, then definitely do that because it'll give you time to think while you're in the air and then just twist more and more, try to land on two feet, turn more and more, land on two feet, find that target, 
keep finding the target every time. You wanna think about doing your round kick, looking at your target, hitting your target, and then immediately spinning back to your target as fast as you can while landing on two feet. Once you can do this and you know you are spinning a full 360, so you go up, you round kick, and then you're facing your target again as you're landing, you're ready to simply lift your left knee. So if you twist to your left, when you kick and you twist and you know that you're about to land, just try to pick up your left knee. Don't try to necessarily like land on the right leg for this method, just pick up your left knee and your body will either naturally put the right leg down or you'll kind of just fall down. But if you are facing back to your target, it's a lot safer than if you land short. So the reason this is safer is because if you're kicking and you're trying to land on that right leg early, then you can turn your knee sideways and it's gonna mess you up if you have all this momentum going sideways and you just stop all of it on one leg. But if you're facing all the way back to your target, then your momentum is actually going this way and it'll just make you put your other leg down if you can't handle landing on one leg. On this method, sometimes what will happen is you'll bring up both legs at the same time, kind of like a parafuso. If that happens, just make sure you isolate and really keep it as a chamber with the left leg as you're kicking the right leg and don't try to land on two feet until after you've passed your target and you know you've passed your target then you could try and put both feet down. But if you pull up both really early and it kind of looks like straight legged and dumb, then it's just that you're trying to spin or pull both legs down too fast. But yeah, that's it for method number one. Like I was saying, all these methods are pretty simple in explanation, but not necessarily easy. So let's move on to method number two. Method number two is vertical 540. So all you're gonna do for this is get used to keeping your cheating leg straight. So you can do it standing and just kind of like have your cheating leg up, jump and kick across that cheating leg as hard as you can, but keep both legs straight so that your left leg is straight and then you kick across with a straight leg. This trains you to always have that right leg strong and straight, kind of like a club. So crescent kicks or you know kicks that are held out the whole time are kind of like a baseball bat or an oni club or something like really stiff and strong uh, whereas round kicks or uh, kicks that have chambers are kind of like a whip ideally for most kicks you want to have a good chamber and you want it to be whippy um, but on 540 kicks and a couple other ones you can have a stiff shape and it can pull you through very powerfully 540 is one that is kind of in the middle. Um, I'd recommend you to do it whippy, and then as soon as you kick, keep it strong and stiff. However, that doesn't work for everyone, so if you feel like the stiff method will work for you, then do it like this. Once you can get the feeling of doing it standing, what you're gonna do is cheat, step across, lift the left leg at your target, so kind of point at it, but point at its feet. So essentially, if you're normally kicking at a head or above the head of someone, if you're visualizing a target, you're gonna kick down. So you wanna cheat up and point kind of at the corner of the floor or at a 45 down, and then you're also gonna kick there when you kick across. But you're just kicking up and over really easily, trying to face back to that target again, again, completing the full rotation, so that way you land safely and everything. And then just keep kicking higher and higher. Step across, lift that leg, kick a little higher at the target, find that target again. If you get stuck at any of these levels, then just go back to the previous one and get used to it over and over again. Remember the drill we did before. So you wanna be leading with a strong hip even though you're keeping your leg straight because if you don't, you're going to start crescenting and using your adductors more and probably end up injuring yourself. But kick higher, then kick higher, then kick higher and start to lean back just a little bit. On this method specifically, it really helps you keep your head upright. Even when you start kicking higher, um, it can make you be very upright with your posture. If that's the way you want it to look, then great. Um, but just be aware it's harder to round kick like that. So if you lean back a little bit, it can help you get that knee up to round kick across and make it a little stronger and a little safer. But yeah, that's it. That's method number two. Just keep your legs straight and kick with it stiff the entire time and hopefully that'll help you learn your 540. The next method is one that I saw from Matt Emig a long time ago and this is essentially the up and over method. To me it's kind of more like a drill but you can actually use it to just walk through the whole thing so I made it a method. So this is really similar to the last method but you're gonna keep both legs tucked this time instead of straight. So chamber up one leg 
and then you want to visualize jumping up and over this. On this one specifically, I want you to focus on spotting the ground off to the left side of that knee that you're chambering. Uh, if you twist to your left, it's on your left. If you twist to your right, it's on your right. But you're basically looking down at the floor, past and almost a little behind that knee. So it's kind of like where your glute is. From there, all you're gonna do is look there, jump up and over with the chambered knee. So you wanna jump, chamber the knee and focus on spinning around, landing back on that right leg that you took off of. Make sure you chamber that knee up again at the end so that you've isolated and landed only on that right leg and then you can put it down. From there, it's exactly the same as the last one, except you're always spotting the ground over there behind you. So step across, lift the chamber, look at the ground, chamber up and over with that right leg, kind of think of it like pumping up and down and then go higher, and go higher and go higher. On this one specifically, you're gonna wanna lean back a lot. Once you get it to where you are like really lean back with that chamber, you're gonna wanna start extending or you're gonna naturally start extending because you're having to reach to the ground. Once you got that, essentially all you have to do now is spot your target and pull your head up. So most of the time when I do this method, even if I'm extending my leg and I'm kicking across really strong, what happens is I'm dropping my chest to the ground because I'm leaning so far back. But as soon as I spot a target and I think about picking my head up away from the ground, it perfects it. So once you've reached that point, pick a target, step across, lean back, chamber like you were doing the pump, but keep your eye on the target, kick that target, extend to the ground, spin around, and hopefully you've got your 540. The next method is transforming or reverse engineering your Cheat 720. So I have an okay Cheat 7. I hate that trick. I want it better. I hate it because it's hard for me and I just want it to be cleaner, but I'm gonna keep working on it. Either way, I know there's a lot of people who are really good at Cheat 7, but don't have a good 540. And that's generally people who come from Taekwondo or ballet or people that spin a lot. If you just spin a lot really fast and then you can have the flexibility to throw a hook kick, it's so much easier than doing a 540 kick because you're gonna need to stay stiff and strong through your 540 kick as opposed to spinning around and just whipping it out really fast like, like, a cheat seven. You don't even have to have a great one for this, but essentially what I want you to focus on is trying to double pump. So if you can do a double pump cheat seven or 540 in Taekwondo, another terminology mix up like I was saying, what you're essentially doing is you're lifting that left knee, leaning back a little bit, then you're pumping with that right knee to turn your hips and get your hip even higher, and then you're turning to hook kick. But we can use that to just teach ourselves 540. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna cheat up, look over at the ground instead of spotting your target, and then you're going to pump with that right leg and keep the left leg chambered the whole time so you just land with the knee up and vertical rather than sideways and chambered for the hook kick. And again, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. From there, you just start spotting your target, pump with that knee, try to hit a round kick before you step down to the ground with that leg. And if you can go up, kick a target with a round kick because your hip is already primed for that round kick because you're in that chamber, and then you step down to the ground and you lift that leg up at the end, you did yourself a 540. Worst case scenario, you hit the round kick and then you accidentally hit the hook kick and, oh man, shucks, I did a jackknife. Oh then you can just reverse engineer your jackknife and don't kick at the end and you got yourself a 540. Again, I wanna be more in depth with this, but it's simple, it's just not necessarily easy. You're lifting the knee, you're kicking across, you're snapping it out, you're stepping down, that's a 540 kick. And the last method I have for you is using a mat. So if none of these methods are working for you and you have access to a gym or you know a high bed or something like that, what you can do is Get a mat that is about your chest height, something like that. Not shoulder height, because that's a little too high. Not waist height, because that's a little too low. It's not gonna teach you much. You want something about chest height. All you're gonna do is mimic your 540 over that mat. So set up next to it. Make sure you have enough space to you know, walk into it and do a cheat setup. Step across, face your target, lift that left leg up onto the target as you kind of like drop to your back. Kick across with that right leg, pushing forward with your hip and land on the floor with that right leg. That's the motion of a 540 kick. From there, you just start to speed it up, 
land on it, roll across, kick down, making sure to pull your head up at the end. Then you try to go faster and faster. Sometimes you might miss it. Just make sure you step all the way to the mat and step as close as you can with that right leg as you are lifting that left leg up. It's helpful if you keep the leg straight, you land on it, and then you kick across. If you want it to feel more like a 540, try to keep your chest forward a little bit more and flex your abs rather than laying all the way back. Um, but then you just try to do it a little harder and a little faster until you feel like you're not using the mat. You take the mat away and then you do the same motion and hopefully that'll get you your 540 kick. Simple, but not necessarily easy. Let's go ahead and move on to common mistakes. The first most common mistake I see is crescenting instead of rounding. I was already talking about this earlier, so I'll touch over it really briefly. Essentially, if you're kicking like a crescent, you're taking longer because your chest is targeting your, your target for a really long time, and then you turn. You're also using your adductors, which is your groin muscles, and you are pulling uh, a lot of force on those, and this is the most common way I see people injure themselves. They'll hurt their groin, trying 540s, and it's because they're kicking like a crescent instead of a round. If you're kicking like a round, then you're using your quads, which are a lot stronger, and then you're also giving yourself an additional like spin before you round kick, so that all you have to do is hit that target and step straight to the ground and spin around. So do a round, not a crescent, in my opinion. Even though, again, it's gonna look like a combination of a front, crescent, round, when you're doing a 540. Mistake number two, having a concave hip shape like this, and not leading with your hip like this. That's one of the biggest and most key details to a 540 kick that a lot of beginners don't get down and don't understand. If you can keep your leg straight from your knee to your shoulder, if you can push with that hip, then it helps pull the rest of your body across. You'll spin faster, you'll kick more powerfully, and it'll feel a lot easier than if you are leading with the leg and kind of like making this shape for your 540, you're gonna start descending really fast because you don't have enough force pulling you through it. Your leg is going up and kicking you, but it's basically disconnected from your upper body. But if you are flexing this and pushing it forward, it keeps your body with that and kind of pulls you up at the same time so that you can spin, so that you can get height and have more power. So make sure you are pushing that hip forward as you're kicking. The next most common mistake I see is not spotting. Aim not just here, but kind of here for 540 for the best effect. You wanna step across while looking at that target. Keep your eye on it for as long as possible. Turn your head as you jump for the cheat and then kick across that target as fast as possible and then find the target again. This will help you cheat higher because you're gonna be looking at something, kick on target and complete the rotation because you're gonna look for that target again and it'll help you spin because your body naturally follows your eyes. Not picking your head up at the end. So essentially all you have to do is treat it like you're bowing. Whenever you're coming down from a trick, you wanna pull your head up like this like you're doing the end of a bow. You wanna bow very respectfully, but then stand up just as quick, keep your eye on your enemies just in case. Um, but you're pulling with your back muscles as you're kicking across. So you kick across and then right here, people tend to drop their chest. You want to pull your head away from the ground as you're coming down from the 540 and lift that left leg so that you have more force going upwards than downwards and you'll land super light and it'll help you to not injure yourself. Make sure you pull your head up at the end of your 540. Not fully rotating for your 540. I see this so much. If you guys don't turn all the way back to your target, by the time you're landing the 540 kick, then what happens is you land short, you have all this force going sideways, like I mentioned earlier, and you can tear your knee up because it'll tear your ACL going sideways, and then you'll be out of tricky for a long time. <laughs> So focus on spinning after you kick. Once you've kicked your target and you know you have kicked your target, it's literally just a spin, turn around, find that target again. Um, as long as you land on that right leg first and then immediately touch that left leg down, it'll be a 540 kick. Just make sure that you fully rotate so you don't have sideways momentum when you're coming down. Normally, I'm a proponent of get your trick and then clean it up over time, but this is one of the few occasions where I'm saying this part needs to be relatively perfect or else you're being unsafe. Make sure that you don't fall short on your 540 and that you turn all the way around. I've given you plenty of methods to where you can practice doing that specifically. And the last one is not 
cheating properly or not cheating enough for height. So a lot of times you'll see people do a cheat setup where they step across and they jump before they jump. Unless you're doing like a Narbonne or an Audubon or something like that, you want to make sure that you step across, plant the foot, turn to your target, and then lift your knee, or in this case for 540, a straighter leg, depending on your technique. Lift it fully, push through your hip, push through that bottom foot, get in the air using your arms and everything at one like time, like one piece, and then kick across and spin and everything. I see a lot where people do that double jump thing, or they just try to go really fast and they don't actually go up much and they don't like set for their kick. And so this holds you back from getting your 540 for a long time if you don't properly cheat and face your target before you lift. If you're facing away from your target when you lift, then it's gonna start pulling you down and backwards. Even if you spin all the way back to your target, but you lift it here, you're gonna start descending over here while you're trying to kick, and then you'll probably just fall backwards or you'll land really short and you won't know why. But that's it for 540 kick. Hopefully this helped you Rising Dragon and hopefully this helped anyone else watching this video. If it did help you, please leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video and or if there's anything else you wanna see from me. Please subscribe to this channel if you wanna support me. I'm at about 840 subscribers now and I appreciate all 840 of you. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos. Hopefully I can give back to you and help you land some of your tricks. But until next time, please stay safe and healthy and I'll see you guys later. I don't have a tornado. I don't have a tornado. I don't have a two. <laughs> Dude, yo. I don't have a tornado. <laughs>